welcome to our Greenhouse Worship Song Spotlight. Um, a thing that we're going to do every now and then as we introduce these new songs. And we're going to discuss the new songs a little bit, both musically and especially lyrically, and talk about kind of why we are singing these songs, introducing these songs. And today we're going to talk about a song that we've been doing over the last few months it's, or a few weeks. It's been our song for the month of, our new song for the month of February called Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me, originally written by City Alight. And this Sunday we will be singing it for the third time. So David James, could you kind of share a little bit about the song? And yeah, so this is a song that came out a few years ago. Um, other individuals on our staff, uh, Josh, myself, have been worshiping in it, worshiping with it in our own personal worship time. Um, which for me happens a lot in the car, I'll be honest, <laughs> by myself. Um, if you see me going down the road and I'm screaming, I'm not yelling at the other cars. I'm probably screaming along out to a worship song. Um, but yeah, so this is a song that we've known for a little while now, but we wanted to introduce it here at Green Pines. Um, and I think the cool thing that we like about this song is lyrically it is really strong. Uh, lyrically there's a lot going on, which sometimes that can be overwhelming, but in this case, as we'll explain here in just a few minutes, um, these lyrics are pointing to something that's pretty meaningful, something that's pretty awesome, um, and honestly, the joy of our salvation and our faith. Um, we do want to start this time by kind of just talking about two different aspects. Um, one's going to be the musical aspect, and then we're going to dive deeper into the lyrics after that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of take force with this describing the musical aspect of this. Um, I don't know what take force means with that. That's a little bit frightening, <laughs> I'll, I'll honest. But um, so, you know, normally in the worship songs that we sing on Sunday mornings, um, you'll have multiple parts of the song. Um, you'll have verses. You'll have pre-choruses sometimes, um, which is just setting yourself up for the chorus, which then we'll have choruses most all the time. And then there'll be a section called a bridge, which kind of deviates a little bit, which then brings us back home to the chorus that we'll sing, you know, two or three times four times at the end of a song Seven normally. Seven times, 11 times. Yeah, depending on what song it is, right? Um, so the cool thing about this song is there's actually no set chorus in this song. Um, we like to use the term refrain in this song and referring to this song because what we see in this song is there's four verses and then the second half of each verse is this familiar melody, this refrain, so to speak, that starts with the this, this phrasing, I'm just going to read it, to this I hold my hope is only Jesus, and then that's the first one. And then after that, we're going to continue singing this, to this I hold, to this I hold. But then the last half of that is going to change sometimes depending on the verse. Um, so that's really cool that the melody stays the same, although the lyrics deviate a little bit as we go down um, the page uh, lyrically with the song. So again, four verses. Um, we're going to kind of just take a few moments of our time and of yours to just kind of talk about what we like about these verses lyrically. Um, and so, Josh, yeah? Yeah, so the one, one of the key themes really that as you're going through our Bible reading plan throughout the year, especially as we read through the books of, written by Paul, that comes up a lot is our union with Christ. The fact that we were, as sinners, separated from Christ. And the way that we are, are separated from God and the way that we are reconciled to God is through his son, Jesus. And so through Jesus' death and resurrection, we join with him in those things. We join with him in his death. It says um, in his crucifixion, Galatians 2.20 says, we've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. Um, we're joined with him in, re in resurrection in um, Colossians 1, if then you've been raised with Christ, that we have joined in with him in that. And the most important aspect of our salvation is this unitedness with Christ, because now that we are union with, united with him, we have we are now a brother of Christ. We have entered into the family of God. And so through this, that is this thing coming up all throughout this song is there's all these things that we receive as being a part of the family of God now, that we are, he's Jesus, our redeemer. And so we now have this hope. He's our joy, our righteousness, our freedom. Um, he's our shepherd that will defend us. So we're not going to be forsaken. And all these things come through our union with Christ. So it's not because of anything that we've done but it's because of the power of Christ working in us and through our spirit, through the Holy Spirit in us. And so that is the, the glorious truth to hold on to throughout this song as well, that as we're going through, we're constantly coming back to this. Because we have been united with Christ, he is at work within us, and his work shining through us is what allows us to have this, so that it ultimately looks forward to this end hope mm -hmm. of, at the end of time, still my lips shall repeat, 
yet not I, but through Christ in me, that all we have is because of Jesus. Well, that was pretty well put, in my opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, you know, just continuing on with that train of thought, you know, um, I personally really love uh, verse 2 and verse 3. These are the two, you know, middle verses, obviously, sandwiched between verse 1 and verse 4. Um, and like as Josh just described a lot, you know, verse 1's talking about this gift of grace that Jesus is, um, all these things. We're honestly describing who he is to us in our life as believers, um, you know, I, I really love this this line, there is no more for heaven now to give. I think a lot of times I, you know, even in my own Christian walk, um, I find myself subconsciously downplaying the power of the cross. You know, I'll downplay the fact that, you know, our whole faith is hung on the fact that God sent his son to come down to earth, leave heaven, leave perfection, to live a sinless life, to die in my place. Like, that is... And then, again, after three days, to rise from the grave, defeating death, conquering sin. And if I've placed my faith and trust in that, like, I can be saved. I am saved because of that. And so that's what, like, that's what heaven has given, is that free gift of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so a lot of times we try to, like, make church, we try to make our faith, make religion a little bit, like, so much more than that by all these different things. That could be maybe programs, that could be, you know, different events that we have going on at church. But, like, in the end, the main thing, like, we need to keep the main thing, the main thing, in my opinion, as cliche as that statement is. Um, so this song is kind of setting it up with that in mind. You know, the main thing is obviously the blood, the, the, the blood of Jesus setting us free. Um, and then we get into verse 2 and verse 3, and these are kind of... Um, really talking about, you know, honestly, the valleys in our life, the seasons of um, darkness, um, you know, the night is dark, but I'm not forsaken. You know, a lot of times, and even in this past year, you know, ever since last March of 2020, when this whole um, pandemic crisis kind of hit and hit the forefront, like this year has been a really hard year. And I say this year because sometimes I'm still struggling to imagine that we're in 2021 but i'm just calling it all the whole entire year um there's so there's a lot of darkness that's been going on there's a lot of things that are going on and you know we understand that you know even looking at scripture that we don't expect this world the sin cursed world to get better <laughs> we obviously um sometimes we would hope that it would get better but we know you know scripture tells us it's not going to but then we get back down to verse four you know with every breath i long to follow jesus until i stand with joy before the throne so, you know, we're looking, you know, to this king who's writing the upside down world and we're looking forward like this past Sunday, we were looking at the book of Luke, you know, we're looking forward to Jesus seating at the right hand of God when it's all said and done, when it's all over, you know, all this chaos, this trouble, this sin problem, you know, whenever it has been defeated, but whenever all of it comes to fruition, um, as we read, you know, in the book of Revelation, um, so I, you know, personally, Josh, I, really, I love those two uh, middle verses. It's talking about the things that we're kind of going through now. It's kind of things that we go through in our own personal lives, collectively as a, as a group. Um, but at the end of each of these verses, there's hope. You know, to this I hold my shepherd will defend me. You know, he'll, even through the deepest valleys, he's going to lead us through those. So I, I love the fact that this song doesn't shy away from talking that that's going to happen, that that is happening. But it definitely, in the end, especially even in each verse, it's talking about, you know, even through that, even through that, um, Jesus has got us. He's got us on. Um, yeah, there's so. that assurance throughout it where yeah. there's, I know, to this I hold, my sin has been defeated, um, that with every breath I long to follow Jesus because he has said that he will lead me home, that we have this assurance of what Christ has done, um, and that eventually when the race is complete, at the end of days, what we're still going to repeat is, yet not I, but through Christ in me. It's all about the glory of Christ throughout it all. Absolutely. And so we really hope that you guys are continuing to enjoy this song and worship with this song, that it becomes a part of yours and your family's uh, life songs and heart songs within what you do, and that you continue to worship with it. I'm looking forward to worshiping with it this Sunday um, and moving forward as a part of our church body. So thank you, and we hope you have a great day.